This is Twit. So I watched your coverage yesterday of the Worldwide Developers Conference uh, that Apple did in iOS 8. And I was, I'm very excited about 8. Um, uh, they have, they're, they're giving us features which I think they can probably do securely. I, I like the idea of starting from something that if anything is too closed and then carefully opening it once you've built a security infrastructure that allows you to open it securely. And, you know, we had our famous three episode podcast on iOS security where we looked at, you know, this incredible infrastructure which has been built and is present in iOS 7 now. So what they're beginning to do now is, you know, Apple hears what people are asking for, and they're looking over at Android and seeing what people are able to do on that platform and recognizing, okay, you know, we need to we need to be a little looser here, but not sacrificing security. So with the base of security they have, they are now going to be allowing a sort of a controlled inter-application communications. So applications will be able at the user's under user control to surface some of the some of their user interface elements in other apps so for example you could bring up the little send to panel in safari and in addition to sending it to email or or iMessage you could send it to other apps um and and for example It'll be really interesting to see what LastPass may be able to do. We may finally be able to get, in fact, I've already got a dialogue open with, with Joe, um, and the, he hasn't seen this in enough in depth yet, but the it looks like Apple will be making the, the so-called DOM, the D-O-M, the Document Object Module. Wait, the document. Yes, that's correct. Object Module? Model. Sounds wrong. Model. Model, that's it, model. Um Available and essentially, it's this beautifully standardized hierarchical description of a web page, and you can traverse it, you can explore it, and for example, in there will be the form fields, which are you know to be filled out by LastPass, and so it may very well be that we get, for example, in Safari on iOS the same level of int of last pass integration that we are enjoying on traditional browsers on our desktop operating systems so that would be really nice so they're essentially curated sandboxed interactions is the way apple is describing them so again not a free for all but more more inter-app communication, which I think was going to be a great move forward. It's, uh, it's, um, I think it's well done because the receiving app and the sending app have to cooperate. And in effect, the sending app is a standalone app. It's called an extension that operates as a, a standalone app. And is, I think they've, they've done it exactly right. And I think you make a really interesting point that if you start from security and work that way, it's much easier and better than to start from insecurity and work towards security. So right. I, I don't think I think what they're doing, you know, judging from what I've uh, I've read, is uh, is the exact way to do it. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's exciting. And Leo, custom keyboards. Oh, be still my heart. Well, be frankly, that was that was why I left iOS. So. Oh God, I know, and of course, it's why I've got my little typo keyboard yeah. you know my blackberry clone i mean the i tried the flexi app and it, you know it's like okay so i could kind of type onto a notepad but then i've got to copy and paste everything over into the other app where i want it to go so now we're talking about user installable third-party keyboards so yay you know, the idea of being able to experiment with something better than this ridiculous keyboard where if your fingers, after you press the button and it goes click, and then your finger slides off it and it doesn't register. Yeah. It's like, what? You know, yeah. that's the definition of the iOS default keyboard now. So, and I guess, you know, they're, they're, they've added something called quick type where it, it knows who you're talking to and learns 
the kind of communication, like how formal you are with that contact, and then is, you know, does does word prediction and posts the words above where you're typing. And so when you see the word you've given it the first few characters of, you say, oh, yeah, that's what I meant. And then you just tap that in order to type the whole thing in. So anyway, so so that's being moved forward. But boy, I love the idea of an ecosystem of of, of attempts to improve the keyboard. Uh, yay. So, you know, maybe that, that would be great. I mean, if I, the problem is I'm going to want the big phone. And of course, no more typo keyboard on the big phone. So I'm going to go back to a keyboard, to an on-screen keyboard, but it looks like I may have a choice of, of which one. So I'm jazzed about that. And they're opening Touch ID, as we hope they would, to third-party apps. So that's just great. What that essentially means is that an app will, I mean, like perfect example is Squirrel. You, I, I the, the, the thing I need in for Squirrel on the iPhone is for you to r continually re-authenticate so that your, you know, a sibling or a, a friend hasn't picked up your phone and is using it and, and thanks to the fact that Squirrel is able to authenticate for you, the, the thing we need is you to authenticate to Squirrel. So the idea that Squirrel would be able to say, you know, pop up the little fingerprint image and you go, oh, yeah, and put your fingerprint on Touch ID. And then there's a, a secure communication. And I'm sure Apple will have done it right. We have no documentation yet that I've seen, but that, that'll be coming shortly, um, where there's a, a secure communication to authenticate that you are who you are, and then that gives Squirrel permission to authenticate on your behalf to the website you're visiting. So, and I mean, and all the other apps that want to have, you know, on the fly re-authentication will be able to leverage this. So that's just wonderful news. Yeah. And and I also saw something that that didn't make the headlines, but per app battery usage. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Well, it's something so, everybody else has had, but uh, it's it's time. <laughs> <laughs> a lot okay. of these things. I mean, we should, we, to be fair, are things that Apple's playing catch up on. But uh, you know, like keyboards and so forth. But uh, you know, it's good. It it it's yeah. Good. And I'm happy that it. Android is there. I'm happy that Android is there to apply pressure. Yeah. To to Apple because well, I want Apple's going to integrate it in in a more elegant way, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the the per app battery I, info is what it is. There's no elegant way to do that and it's something they ought to have put in there ages ago because otherwise you can't figure out what is draining my battery right and i'm also glad that the whole home kit initiative i would again because apple is apple um because they're not advertising based and they're not you know belkin or linksys that are just using other people's firmware with back doors that they don't that even they don't know about. Um, I'm really comfortable with the idea of Apple getting into the home automation market um, and bringing you know their security model and their approach into the, the our our home. I would prefer them, frankly, than anybody else I can I can think of. So, I I just think that's good news. Yeah, they of all the people out there, they're the ones who could actually make this finally work. Yeah, when I heard that Google had toyed with the idea of putting ads on the Nest thermostat, that was never I, that I thought, was a false rumor. But uh, and good, no, good, that, that's absurd. Good. The last thing I want to have to do is put ad blocking software yeah, no, that's, on that my was thermostat. A, the Google denied it. That was a false rumor. But <laughs> but uh, I think for I think that you the, the larger point is that this will be an alternative for people who don't trust Google. Many of the things that you do with Google now, like Google Drive, will have its equivalents on the uh, ecosystem on the app uh, Mac ecosystem. And yeah, you, you yeah. for people who prefer privacy. This will be a good choice.